So once you download the uh, Stereo PanoCam project folder, you'll see inside of this folder you'll uh, have all the assets for the PanoCam. Um, the only two you really need, uh, well you'll migrate all of these into your chosen project, whatever project you want to capture in 360. Uh, but the two you'll be using are the BP Pano Cam, which is placed into your scene to capture the scene. And then there's BP Pano Capture, which actually um, is sort of like a recording device for your scene. Um, we'll go to BP Pano Capture. We can actually pin this preview so it's always live. That way when we grab the Pano Cam, we can slide it around and we can see it updating. So what this is, let's go over to the recording device. Simply a camera with a card perfectly aligned to it that has both the left and right views of your eyes UV'd and placed onto this card. So go back to the Pano Cam and you can see that is just recording whatever you do. So you can, you can uh, animate this, the, the panoramic camera, you can animate it positionally. Um, rotations won't matter, so don't really animate rotations, but positions are fine. <coughs> the rest of these are just utilities or parts being used within the blueprints. These, uh, these four masks I'm using as uh, masks to blend between front, left, right, and back they have different we have four of four of them one is perfectly sharp and the other three are just progressively more soft edged and you can see the the blur here that'll allow you to blend the the side view to the front view depending on how soft you need that edge to be because there are some artifacts of seams and edge blending in the process but that's better explained when we actually go into a scene these are for capture cube render targets. They are set currently at their maximum of, of 2K. So each eye is getting 2K. Um, we're recording four of them and then we're blending them together in, on the, uh, st the stereo card. So the end result will be a matinee record of 4K by 2K and that is currently its maximum. I'll also take a quick moment to mention the two materials uh, for the left eye and right eye. Let's take a look at one of them. These materials are set up to uh, reference each of the four directional capture cubes. So one is doing the front view, the right view, another for the left view, and another for the back view. They are transforming. Now here's sort of the magic of it. We're taking some uh, HLSL code and transforming what would normally be a reflection vector uh, lookup for the the capture cube render target and we're turning it back into a texture using that code now that it's a texture we can sample it as normal and we're just linear interpolating it um, from all the directions using each mask so red is right green is left black is front and blue is back and then they all go into emissive color into an unlit texture and placed on the card we do that for the left eye and the right eye, and uh, the card then composites them both together for left and right, and then the camera that is capturing all of this is what we're using in matinee to finally record the output. Alright, so let's uh, actually migrate our PanoCam assets over to a new scene and see if we can render out a 360, a stereo 360. Uh, so we'll select all the assets. Asset actions migrate. That's good. Send that to Office Loft, which is my test. Uh, we'll we'll test in that scene. So we brought our content over. Now in Office Loft, we should have a Pano Cam folder with all of our assets. The first thing we're going to do is drag out these two items. So the Pano Cam goes wherever we want our 360 view to uh, to be from takes it a little second for it to refresh into the view so that's good enough we'll throw it there and then the pano capture item goes somewhere in your scene that you don't see it needs to be out of the view so we'll just throw that here 
and you can see that is already showing us our 360 view. We can pin this so that we always have it there and we can see what's going on. If you want to take a look at that again, it's just the card and the camera. So let's move back into our scene. And we need to do a couple of things. We're going to create a new matinee for the pano cam and then we're going to call that matinee in the blueprint, uh, level blueprint. So let's create the matinee. So we'll add matinee. It already has one. It doesn't matter. This was this is for a different purpose in my scene. To you can see other cameras in the scene. I'm just cutting around into those other cameras. But we're going to create a new matinee. <clears throat> in that matinee, we're going to let's select the pano cam capture. So in your world outliner, you can just type in pano. Oops, type it correctly though and you grab the capture. While that's selected, you can right click in matinee, say add new empty group. We'll call it pano capture. And now that camera is set up for the capture scene. And if you click on that camera, you'll actually see the scene go there. Now let's go back to our normal scene. Now that we have our pano capture, we are going to create a new director group. Right click in the empty space, add new director, uh, new director group. So now that we have that director group, we're going to add a key, tell it to be part of pano capture, hit OK. <clears throat> so for this scene, you could you could add the uh, the pano cam into the this this list, and you could animate it. So you can move it around and animate it and do stuff if you want. We're not going to do that. I only really want to show you doing a still for now. Um, so now we have a full range. We don't need that range. We're just going to pick any one of the images we save. But So this is basically set up for the matinee. Um, let's rename the matinee. Pano um, matinee. So it's matinee actor one. Let's rename that to patine pano. So now all of our pano objects can be listed in one. So um, while, let's select matinee pano and we're going to go to blueprints. We're going to open level blueprint. Now in our level blueprint, oh you see I've already done this as a test, but normally your blueprint would be that it's default setup. So this any number of things you might be doing in your level blueprint. We're going to take the event begin play and we're going to disable most of the things that I'm doing. And I'm going to drag the matinee pano in here. From here we're going to drag out a play. So this tells the level blueprint to play the matinee that we just created hook that up and that's all we really need to tell it to do that so let's close the level blueprint we'll just save everything and I think we're ready to record so if we go to the matinee again select matinee pano I'm gonna drag this there now we go to the movie so here I have 4K selected. So 4096 by 2048. You can you can choose whether you want 30 frames a second, 60. Since I'm just doing a still, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do a JPEG sequence. You can turn on cinematic mode. You can disable movement and turning. You know, if you have an animation, you certainly would want to disable that stuff. But it doesn't really matter for for this. Now, while it, after it saves, I'm going to minimize the scene so that it uh, has better performance. I'm going to let it cache out. It takes a moment. So the first frame is usually incorrect. So we can even play the game very slowly a little bit. Uh, maybe not. So it's saving frames currently. I guess uh, it, everything is still disabled.
Let's escape out of that. I have an escape hotkey set to quit my game. If you don't have an escape hotkey or something to quit your game, just hit Alt F4 to uh, quit the game. So to find those uh, images that we just saved out, we'll go to our uh, Office Loft, whatever your project is, go into the Saved folder. There will be screenshots, and in Windows, you'll see the image sequence that we saved out. Uh, you can even see here that the first frame is incorrect, but every frame thereafter is, is correct. Um, you can see that there are some stitching seams here, not quite right. Now this was using a pretty sharp edged mask so you could choose one of the softer edged masks to kind of blend these seams together a little bit. I'll give you a quick look at doing that. So you'll go into both the left and right materials. In the left and right materials this is the texture we're using to blend. So you can let's maximize this and you can just select Angle Blend Blur 3 and that has a softer edge to it. At least it's supposed to. Let's see. We'll go there. Angle Blend Blur 3. Yeah, so softer edge there and uh, if you want you can export this and make even softer edges if you want or you can even customize the shape of this to wrap around objects that um, that you don't want to see seams on. So do that for update this for both the left and right material and then re-export and you should have uh, softer blended seams. So that'll do it. Hope this helps. Take care.